actually hate to advocate for crews. And there are some really incredible people in the union who are doing advocacy work right now, who are garnering a lot of attention right now. Um, you can follow IATSE here on Instagram. You can also follow IA Stories. It's at IA underscore stories to get anonymous sharing for and from folks who are in the union talking about camera crews, grips, the electricians, transpo drivers, coordinators, folks who work in offices, wardrobe, hair and makeup. These are the hundreds and hundreds of people who exist behind the scenes. Whatever you see on camera with, you know, five or eight actors on a stage, on a set, only happens because 200 people off camera are busting their asses. And what I think is really special about what IATSE is doing and about what this account, IA Stories, is doing is that they are sharing things and really pulling back the mystery. And there's a couple of things that as talent uh, above the line, all the bullshit terminology that gets used um, for us actors, there are some things that feel important to me to add. And I think they're really important to add because I've experienced a lot of years, and you've heard a lot of actors share stories uh, as they relate to Me Too and the working conditions uh, that allow for that kind of abusive behavior to happen to us. Um, we've shared a lot of that, but our crews are part of it. They're on set with us, and they're often the people that you don't hear from because they're the people who don't have platforms that are quite as large. And I've had people send me uh, responses to some of these IA stories, stories, details, um, experiences from crew members that I've shared with all of you. I've had people say to me like, holy crap, this is really crazy. Um, wow, these stories are nuts. Is it really that bad? And what I want to say is yes. It's not normal to call 200 people into work at 4.30 in the morning on a, on a Monday have them work until 8 p.m. that night, and by Friday, because of the requirements for turnarounds, have people coming in at 6 p.m., work until 7 a.m. the next day, and then be expected to come back to work on Monday at 4 a.m. And a lot of people say, well, you know, what can you do, and how do you stand up for people? And there's a couple of things I wanna just say I stand in solidarity with, and some things that I think are really worth folks in our industry and other industries hearing. Um, a woman shared a story on that feed about how she had to get antibiotics from her doctor because of the frequent UTIs from not being able to go to the bathroom on set because there are no breaks um, and especially women get yelled at for their small bladders um, when they say, I need a second. I went through that on two jobs. Um, and it actually became a thing that me and a makeup artist friend of mine talked about, like who's got them, you know, who around has an antibiotic, I'm getting a UTI because I've not been able to pee for eight hours today. And that's like one of those things that people look at as taboo, like talking about periods or TMI. Mm -hmm. It's not, these are our bodies. Basic bodily functions are just part of being a human. And I've said something about that in the past and basically been told, you know, don't complain, you're an actor. You don't have it as bad as the crew. And I've thought a lot about what that means, that rhetoric that a lot of us have heard. A lot of us in my position have heard on sets anyway. Um, I remember doing a job and the conditions were pretty gnarly. When you have to go to work um, in weather that's so extreme that schools shut down, <laughs> And people are warned not to be outside because breathing in uh, 45 degree below zero temperatures can actually freeze your lung tissue. And crews are expected to still go to work. Um, you're just told that's the way it is. And I worked under such conditions on a job once and so many members of our crew were sick. The PAs in particular, because the PAs make the least money of anybody on a set. They can't wear Mount Everest snowsuits that the producers can afford. And I went and advocated for my PAs one day on set to a producer, and I'm not gonna name names, they know who they are. 
And if you're watching, you know the story's about you. Um, I went and said, guys, this is crazy. Like, it's really not easy for us, but we have vans we can get in. The transfer guys are looking out for us. PAs are at the end of these streets doing lockups. These are unsafe conditions. And three of them have walking pneumonia. And one PA, who I'm also not going to call out, but you know who you are and I love you. Um, one PA on my team, who I'll call John because it's a generic name, had really bad pneumonia, not walking pneumonia, like full-blown pneumonia. And I said this to my boss, John's got pneumonia. And these three other people have walking pneumonia. Like, what are we doing to our crew? And the two most powerful people on our set who I went to, one of whom was another actor who had more power than I did, started laughing when I said this. And one of them looked at me and said, we can get another John. What do you care? Imagine talking about your coworker that way. The person who's responsible for keeping you safe from a car coming up the street and running you over at work, saying that that person is dispensable. So yes, what is happening really is that bad. And so many people who are whistleblowers get deemed difficult, are told to shut the fuck up, are told they have no reason to complain because they have it better than some of the minimum wage workers on our sets. And I say this not so that you have sympathy for me, being in a position where asking for decent human treatment um, for myself and for my coworkers was laughed at. But I say it because what I'm really thinking a lot about as I read these stories every day and I check in on that account multiple times a day, what I'm thinking about is that the entire system, often from the top, is predicated on results that require inhumane conditions to achieve and so many of us are told we don't get to stand up to it. I know that myself and many other women who I have advocated with on the subject matter of Me Too, on Time's Up, have stayed on set while being abused because we don't want to keep our crews waiting. We don't want people to miss dinner with their kids if they might ever get it once a week. We've been told, don't make a scene you're just gonna hold the crew up. And guys, I, I'm flabbergasted by this. And the way that it's hitting me as I read all of this and I get so upset about the fact that it's not just one set. It's not, oh, you got stuck on a bad job. This is pervasive in our industry. People are mistreated in our industry because Folks who work in office buildings in cities where our productions are not being filmed aren't there to witness it. So many of the people in charge have never worked on a set, have never been a PA, have never had a conversation with a first AD. And the disconnect and the set is far away puts so many people at risk. And I know the kind of awful shit that I've had to deal with on a set and it's keep your chin up, don't cause a scene, don't wreck the day for the crew, because if you leave and go to the office, if you shut the set down, all these people are gonna have to wait on you. And I think about the idea that I've been told that's within my power, but actually what it is is being told you don't have any power to advocate for yourself or to advocate for other people. And I'm really angry and I'm really angry on behalf of the crews who are told they don't have any power at all, who are told that they are completely dispensable and completely replaceable, who work for people that when they are literally on the verge of being deathly ill, laugh about how you can always get another PA. This is not okay. And making your days isn't worth killing people. Making these days isn't worth people totaling their cars on the way home at 7.30 in the morning on a Saturday because they've done what we in the industry call a frater day, which is when you start on a Friday, but you're starting so late that you actually work until the next day. There has to be a better way to do this. And when you see actors from other places, my friend Ashley shared about this just this week, that she went and worked on a production in London and was shocked at what it meant to have a 10 hour day that people could rap when the sun was still up, that they could see their children on more than just Saturdays and Sundays. It's possible. 
And it requires a level of seeing each other as people. And I don't know if there's been so little public sort of support for crews because a lot of crews don't get to do what I do. A lot of those people don't have their faces known by the audiences who watch their shows. But please make no mistake that any show or any movie that you watch and that you love belongs so much more to the crew than any of us as actors. There are so many more of them than there are of us. And they are literally the reason that we show up and go to work every day. They make set fun and enjoyable. They teach us shit that they don't have to, like about cameras and lighting and equipment and how budgets work. And truly, the crew is our family. So I guess I'm venting about this and just stream of consciousness word vomiting my deep frustration and anger about the way folks get treated because what I would love is for anybody out there who's ever heard a story from somebody like me or my coworkers about bullshit we've had to endure on set and shared about that and signed a petition or shown up, you know, talked about this with the people in their lives. I would love for you to care as much about what the crew is going through right now. I would love if you shared our letter back when the Me Too stories broke, or if you have ever shared anything in support of people who are going through abusive conditions in their workplace, I would love for you all to follow IATSE. I would love for you all to follow IA stories. I would love for you to take up this cause because it's only unions that are able to help people right now. For example, during COVID, the grocery workers union was able to force force states to give grocery workers hazard pay. That was only a $5 an hour increase and the grocery stores can afford it. If Whole Foods got acquired for $13 billion, they can sure as shit pay their workers a living wage. I'm also so sick of living wages. I don't know why we're not advocating for thriving wages, but that's a whole separate conversation. Guys, conglomerates that own, whether it's grocery stores, movie industries, the auto industry that are worth billions of dollars, have the money to take care of people they just haven't been forced to. And the reason that I think in the same way when we were going through all the nonsense last year with SAG, our Screen Actors Guild, our Actors Union, the reason that I went hard in the paint about that is because unions have the opportunity to protect us. Unions have the opportunity to organize. IATSE has the opportunity to win safety and decency in our industry that will matter, not only in our industry, but for every industry. I know that there are other workers unions paying attention to what happens here. So if you work in the industry or in any other industry where you have not been well treated, please show up. Together, our advocacy can make a difference. And I'm just throwing my hat in the ring as a woman who has been on sets for almost 20 years and who has felt more loved and more protected and more supported and more taught and more held by my crews than by anybody. These systems that tell each of us that we're disempowered to change it are the problem. The conglomerates that are making 20 billion in profit a quarter and say that they can't lengthen shoots so that the people who work on their sets can see their children, can be in relationships, can avoid substance abuse, can avoid getting into near fatal accidents on the way home. Yes, they can, they just don't want to. And my hope is that across industries, our industry, healthcare workers who've been made to suffer during this pandemic, grocery workers, frontline workers. My real hope is that the more that we can see through the kind of bullshit and get really transparent about the way workers are treated, we can change it. So I stand in the utmost like hands shaking, like deep sacred rage solidarity with IATSE. I hope that all of the Screen Actors Guild will. I hope that the WGA will. I hope that the AMPTP is listening. And I hope that the studio heads are listening. It doesn't have to be like this. And it's not supposed to be. We're not supposed to make people suffer, especially when we're making art. Like, come the fuck on. So anyhow, I appreciate um, folks who've shown up today and I appreciate each and every person 
who is taking the time to learn about what's going on with IATSE, um, to my crews, to the folks who I've been texting with nonstop for the last couple of weeks, who've been reaching out and checking in on each other, especially my camera departments, you know who you are. Um, I love you guys. I'm like always ready to ride or die with you. And I really, I just really hope the powers that be are listening because we're not all siloed from each other anymore. And we don't all think, oh, I've got to stay quiet to protect other people. It's actually that we've all tried to be good soldiers and just show up um, that has made it so that none of us are protected. And so in whatever ways I can spend the privilege of this platform to advocate for my coworkers, um, it's my honor to do so. Whatever you need, I hope in whatever small way I can help, I can. And I really hope that, like I said, my fellow members of SAG and AFTRA, um, writers, everybody, I really hope you start feeling empowered to stand up publicly um, for the folks who are the only reason that we get to do what we love to do for a living. And uh, yeah, that's a rant. And now it's over.